principle number nine. So, Jesus is the greatest entrepreneur of all time because he understood the importance of an elite team. Okay? So, Jesus was about his father's business and he didn't embark on it alone like so many entrepreneurs do for an overextended period of time. Right? He picked a team and he didn't just pick anyone, but he was looking for certain skill sets. And I would say he was looking for or looking at people's hearts when he picked teams. Um, skill sets and he was looking at hearts. So if you look at the words he said to Simon Peter, he said, I will make you fishers of men. So he saw that Peter had a skill in catching fish. And I believe that he saw Peter's heart. And I also believe that knowing the plans and purpose he had for Peter, it was not to catch fish, but to catch men. And it's funny because sometimes we, um, we're doing jobs that maybe utilize our skills, right? Um, but we're using it in the wrong area. And I say wrong area according to maybe where God wants us to use those things. So Peter had this skill of catching fish, right? Great, you might say. He's using one of the skills, gifts that God gave him. But in actuality, I gave you that skill of being able to catch for a greater purpose. And so Jesus identified that in him. Um, as well as that, he prepared his team, right? So he gave them deeper insights than anyone else. Oftentimes he might share a parable and he would go away and then the disciples would say, what did that parable mean? Excuse me. And he would happily break it down for them. So he would give them deeper insights into what he's trying to say, as opposed to um, just kind of leaving them to figure things out for themselves. He would make sure that they understood what it was, the message that he was trying to get across. So Matthew 13, 34 says, Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So it was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. The parable of the weeds explained. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And Jesus answered, and then he goes on to explain to them. So he's taken the time to really pour into them, to pour into them. And why is he doing that? He's doing that because he knows at some point in time he wants to deploy them. Right now, Jesus is the one doing the healing, casting out the demons, teaching. But he knows that at a certain point in time, in order for him to really establish this business, to build this business, to, to cause this business to grow and to expand, he cannot be the only one who knows how to do these things. So he's taken a group of people, he's identified skill sets that they have, he's looked at their hearts and he's pouring into them so that at a point in time they can now go out and do what he does and as entrepreneurs if we want to genuinely have successful businesses that we can scale we need to take people on board not just anybody who's just happy to come and work for a buck we need to take people on board who we can see has certain skills who has a heart for the mission that we are um that we're trying to reach and that who one day we can then put out into the field to deploy instead of it just being us so um, it says Mark 3, 14, then he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and cast out demons. So he's literally giving them the authority to do what he does. He is scaling, right? Another thing that Jesus had was expectations. He had expectations of the disciples of those who he, who he was teaching, who he was mentoring. 
right? And he got frustrated when they didn't meet his expectations because he knew the work that needed to be done. So Matthew 17, 14, at the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me, even with, bring the boy here to me, right? So, he had an expectation of them to be able to have cast a demon out of this boy. And when he's come and he's seen that they hasn't, he's, 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 how, how long must I be with you people, right? There's an expectation of the people who you're pouring into to actually get to a certain point where they can do what you do. Um, and as well as that, he was very selective. So, he was selective about who was privy to certain information. There was kind of like a hierarchy. So on many occasions, he would often take Peter, James and John with him to witness something uh, intimate or special, like the transfiguration on the mountaintop, right? So if you're an entrepreneur and you're gonna create this elite team, you have to understand who to share what with. You need to have your inner circle and then you need to have those who are outside of the inner circle. So he was very selective with who he chose to be privy to the very intimate parts of what he was doing. Right? I think even just this principle alone this could be a whole series in itself. <laughs> so um, I'll leave it at that. And the question to yourself is who is in your team? Right? Are their skills aligned with your business's objectives? Are you training and equipping them, right? Is there a hierarchy? Can your business still function if you are no longer there, right? Even after Jesus' ascension, the disciples, well, they now became the apostles, they went out. And despite the fact that Jesus no, was no longer physically there, they were still able to continue the work he was doing. If you, if you are no longer there, and you've spent all these years grafting and building this business, can your business still exist? Mm 